drifting through space underground. Doesn't make any sense. Huh. That makes even less sense. It's, just, it's both space and in and a cave at the same time. A, sort of a space cave. Okay, speaking of, this must be the actual cave. Yeah, here we go. And there's a suit here. Just a suit up like that. Oh, and I can boost myself. Aim myself the same way as I did that model. And I guess try for a soft landing? Yeah, that guy's not using it. Oh, I can talk to him. Hey, hey, nice of you to drop down. Well, um, I'm getting some zero-G time in. So you're going in there, in the cave. What? No, I'm fine. Great and fine. Um, I don't know whether it's normal for the uh, area around the pupils of the eyes to be blue like that. You don't look it. Well, you know I hate that cave, so I don't know why you're making me talk about it. Whew, now I got hand sweats. Oh, snap. Okay, if you lose that pickaxe, um, I suppose that wouldn't be my fault. Oh, yeah, the, so the zero-g cave is down in that direction. Okay, well, um, I might have hand sweats. I've got everything sweats. Uh, I'm gonna... Well, gravity is not 0.4. I suppose it's... Yeah, I'm not gonna... I'm gonna try not to land hard. Cushion myself with a bit of upward thrust like this. Alright. Gravity is not 0.1 now. And that's it, the satellite. So I'm going to drift. You can see a malfunctioning bit of it already. Wait, wait. Locking on, magic velocity. i got to get close to that thing, don't I? Alright. Magic velocity again. Just got to get a little bit closer. Ah, I'm close enough to fix the thing. Five meters out. Okay, let me just... Uh... There we go, that's one out of three. I can still hear... It. Wait, wait, there's a sort of a red glow over there. And I can lock on to it, too. Okay. Just drift. A little bit slower than that. Let me get out of this ring first. Match velocity again. Um... All right, there we go. And there, that's two out of three. Meatloaf says it ain't bad, but I disagree. Um, where's the last thing? There's three things to repair. The last one may or may not be... Am I getting closer to it? I'm, I'm trying to keep my ears open here. Wait a minute. It's inside! Okay, let me just lock on. Match velocity again, and... Close in on it like that. Okay, and there we go! One satellite back up and running. Now where was a way out of here? It was in this direction, wasn't it? Ah, yeah, here we go. Okay, so... This cave is zero-G, but the area outside it is not, so I'm going to have to factor that in, too. Cushion myself just a bit. Okay, now the rest of the way up is um, up there. And I'm back. Well, that wasn't too hard. Is this the right direction? 
Yeah, yeah. I'll just put this suit back where I found it. And tell what's his name I'm ready. Because I fixed his satellite. Which is not a piece of broken mining equipment. It is an actual satellite. Sure it is. Okay, one satellite. Nicely done. Of course, it'll be a little more stressful when you're hurtling through space, but just remember, how you're training and trying to hit anything big. I can see you're itching to get off this rock, so go get the launch codes from the observatory and get out of here already. Best of luck out there. And hey, try to avoid getting yourself killed now that I've put so much time into training. You got it? Alright. I don't know how much faith in me he does or doesn't have. Um, you know, it seems almost a little too recently that it was Dawn House. So supposedly the observatory is this way, assuming I'm reading the map correctly. Yeah, I think this is it, actually. What do we got here? Outer Wilds Ventures, Timberheart's first and only space program, was founded to explore the furthest reaches of our solar system. Feldspar was the first Harthian to be intentionally launched into space. They completed the first orbit around Timberhearth and later met the first of what would be many landings on our moon, the Attle Rock. So, the one small step for man, or Harthian, and one giant leap for Harthian kind has already been made. Good to know. Outer Wilds Ventures founding members, Clockwise from top left, Hornfels, Gosan, Slate, and Feldspar. So then who is Esker? They signed their name as well. Ah, what's this? This remarkably intact statue was carved by the Nomai, an ancient species who dwelled in our solar system thousands of years ago. The statue provides us with our most detailed look yet at the Nomai, who appear to have been carved with a layer of, uh, have been covered with a layer of fur. Note the decorative jewelry that has been carved as part of the antlers. Although their artifacts and structures have been found on almost every planet in this solar system, we still have no idea where the species came from or what happened to them. Ah, this is Hal. Hey, hey, it's my favorite astronaut. Launch day at last, huh, buddy? It's the translator tools in Algorf Lake 2. I'm so excited it's making me nauseous. Just think you'll be able to translate any Nomai text you want, anywhere you are. The two of us put a lot of hours into inventing that tool, so don't break it, okay? <laughs> oh, jeez. Do not break it. Ugh, ignore me, okay? I'm just nervous. And I'm not even the one going into space. How are you feeling? Well, um... I wouldn't exactly call myself terrified. Maybe a bit edgy, but not terrified. I'm excited. Good. You've only been waiting this day since we were hatchlings. I can't wait to see all your training pay off. So what's the dirt? You here to see the new Nomai statue? Um... Well, I didn't know... Oh, well, this was a new statue. You haven't heard? Gabber brought it back from the, with them from Giant's Deep, and, uh... Quentin and Hornfels just finished preparing it for display. This is right here. Neat, huh? Makes me wish we could see what a real live Nomai looks like. But I guess this is as close as we'll ever get. Check it out, looks like they had fur. Fur is weird. This is the first fully intact statue I ever found, you know, and for, for how old it's in, it is, it's in great shape. Ah, jeez, I got a little carried away there. Go on, you have a ship to launch. Take care of yourself out there, you hear? Yeah, I'll be careful out there. Oh, but nobody got that. Don't see any jewelry carved into... Ah, eh, never mind. So this is a museum. And what's this? This piece of Nomai writing was essential to deciphering their unique language. Although it, this text is linear, Nomai text often branches off from a central point. Interestingly, each branch tends to be written by a different author. You know, in real life there is an actual ancient text, or a really old text, that's written like that too. 
Ah, so I can translate this. Let me see. Um, Kasaba, we're nearly ready. Felix and I have finished construction, and she says calibrating the device won't take long. Wait, wait, come on. Felix says, unfortunately, the Adderox rocks lack vacuum screw will make calibration simple. After all, this time I'm thrilled to finally resume our search. Now, what's that thing over there? Well, I suppose that's how it works. The text seems to extend as I translate it. A bit unusual. So this thing is a... Uh, aside from the dwellings and structures they built, the Nomai also made art. Th this decorated pottery was discovered on Brittle Hollow. Some ancient Nomai art depicts strange animals, foreign celestial objects, and other subjects that can't be found in our solar system. Which makes us wonder whether the Nomai originated elsewhere in the universe, or simply had vibrant imaginations. Were the Nomai born in our solar system, or were they born among other stars and planets? And if they were, how and why did they come here? These are just some of the questions we hope to answer through fernal, further xenoarchaeological expeditions. What you see here are parts of the Nomai skeleton. We can tell from their skulls that they possessed antlers, and quite unusually, only three eyes. The Nomai body was, almost, was most likely adapted for living exclusively on land. The differences in the Nomai's anatomy, such as their shockingly fragile, fragile bone structure, show us that Harthians couldn't have descended from Nomai and Antistrans. It's not clear where the Nomai originated from or why they disappeared. We hope to find more clues to this puzzle as we explore our solar system. That looks like a... Um, the Nomai technology brought back from space by our astronauts has been a great boon to Outer Wilds ventures, allowing us to modify expedition gear in exciting and useful ways. For example, the Little Scout now boasts a warp retrieval capability that allows astronauts to recall their scouts almost instantly. This has dramatically reduced the number of scouts lost in the depths of space. Well, that must have been how I wasn't able, to, uh, how I didn't need to. Um, go back and pick up that model every time I landed it wrong. Okay. This crystal was taken from a Nomai ruin on Brittle Hollow. It seems to create a local gravity distortion and was most likely used to traverse steep surfaces. Try it out. Huh. I wonder what that means. It, does that mean if I go up here... Oh, wow. Changes. This thing sets the, uh, the direction of down to whatever surface it, it's mounted on. And if I were to walk off this surface, yeah, I'd be back to normal. And this says, yeah, it's the same thing. These look like artwork. Um, That thing, I'm almost positive I saw that um, when I was using the satellites. Oh, what's this? One of those fangly fish, anglerfish. This anglerfish specimen, specimen was found attached to the landing gear of one of our ships that flew too close to Dark Bramble. It appears well suited to living in dark places with minimal atmosphere. swimming in. Alright, and this is, um, stars like our sun generate light and heat by fusing hydrogen into helium. As it grows older, older the star runs out of hydrogen and starts to contract. And then, uh, as the star's core contracts, it gets hotter, causing outer layers to expand. The stars become a red giant. When the core is hot enough, it starts to fuse helium into carbon. If, our star, if a star is massive enough, it will continue to fuse carbon into even heavier elements like iron. Ultimately, the star will collapse under its own gravity and then explode in a violent event called a supernova. Based on Chert's observations, this will one day be the fate of our own sun. 
Well, come to think of it, um, I think every element that's heavier than iron was formed by supernova. But I'm not 100% sure about that. Let's well, be outside. Um, wait a second. Okay, this is nuts. I just looked at... It was over there. Now it's over here. And now it's not going to be on that pillar anymore. It's going to be... Yeah, I called it. It's going to be right over there. And when I'm finished reading this thing, it won't be over there anymore. The strange rod moving around in the spiral appears to react to conscious observation. The level-headed among us realize that there must be some sort of optical illusion to play, but Gabo claims the rock, quote, exists in all possible states until it is observed. What unquote, unquote, whatever that means. Whatever is actually happening, both sides of this debate agree the effect is extremely creepy. And you are now off that pillar onto that one, and off that pillar onto that one, and off that pillar and onto that one. Really? You're not continuing the sequence to that one? Now I'm really confused. A future site of our next exhibit. If you've enjoyed your time with Outer Wilds, please consider supporting Plan Museum expansion. Our quest to explore the furthest reaches of our solar system wouldn't be possible without generous visitors like you. We thank you profusely for your support, and we hope to see you again soon. But I haven't looked at this exhibit yet. Watch closely. These balls move on their own. The ground is perfectly level, so what do you think causes this spooky motion? The answer is the moon. As it orbits our planet, the outer rock's gravity pulls on objects from different directions. In fact, it's pulling on you right now. So it's sort of like the tides. And yeah, they are moving. They weren't before, but they are now. Probably because the moon was um, under us instead of above us. There's one fast moon. Okay, well, I've spent enough time down here. Um, I'm guessing this upper level the observatory itself as opposed to the museum down there. Ah, a map. Okay, I wasn't expecting to see the actual map. So I'm at Timber Hearth. The, um, the closest planet is the Hourglass Twins. Then you've got Brittle Hollow, which, which will be our Mars. Giant's Deep, which I'm guessing is some combination of um, of Jupiter and Neptune, because it's big and it, and it's themed as uh, you know as the sea and Dark Bramble. And I can move the thing around and um, pull it back. Wait a minute. There's something else here in this system somewhere. If I were to yeah, I can pan the view, and then yeah, this little red dot, I don't know what it is. And I can't seem to approach it either, because it's outside the plane of this uh, solar system model. I'd have to go up and down, I can't go up and down, just forward, backwards, left and right. Huh. What is that thing? I have no idea. Well, it's... Hornfell's observations. This is incredible. At first I thought the points of light in this image were stars, but they're not. They're galaxies. And this image just covers just a tiny patch of the whole sky, which means the universe contains at least a thousand times more galaxies than we previously imagined. I, I think I need to sit down. Yeah, he just saw the Hubble Ultra Deep Field. Or at least I saw a version of it. Hmm, this is odd. According to my redshift calculations, every single galaxy in this image is moving away from us. In fact, the farther away a galaxy is, the faster it appears to be moving away. It's almost as if the entire universe is expanding. But if that's true, was everything closer together in the past? And how far back can we extrapolate? Did the universe have a beginning? Well, um, I'm pretty sure all references to a certain television show are played out anyway. 
Ah, so you were Hornfels. I was, um, I was beginning to wonder if I was going to go have to go back and ask where you were. There you are. I just finished pre-flight observations, and local conditions are good. Time to get our newest astronaut off the ground. And you'll be our first astronaut ever equipped with an my translator tool. I confess, I've been giddy all day just thinking about it. We're better equipped than ever to unravel the mysteries of the Nomai. You and Hal should be very proud of your work. Tell me, what's your plan once you're in space? Well, um, I'd, overall I'd like to go learn more about the Nomai and meet up with other travelers and go somewhere that no one's gone before, but I'd like to get my feet wet first. I think I'll start with something small. You'd prefer to ease into things. That's a sensible plan. More sensible than most of our astronauts tend to be, and that's a fact. Don't you think you'll get to the, go to the Do you think we'll go to the Adlerock then? Our moon would be a safe place to travel, level to, and get your bearings in space. And I'm sure Esker would appreciate the visit. Oh, so he's on Adlerock then, but not in that picture. Huh. Plus, we don't know what the ancient Nomai ruins on the moon are, or why they were built. You could put your new translator tool through its paces. Wait. Ancient Nomai Ruins? On the moon? Well then, it looks like all that's left is to send you off. All in all, it's a fine day for a launch. Well, I'm ready to get off this rock. Excellent, you'll be needing the launch codes then. Yeah, I was going to ask about those. Here they are. Best to get off the ground before Slate makes any more modifications to your ship, eh? Good luck out there. Let me know if I can help you with anything. And they are M something N. Actually, I think that's a D. Launch codes MDN. I don't know what that stands for. Or whose initials they are. Wait, I didn't touch anything. 